Researchers from two universities in Singapore will get a boost in developing and marketing their technologies. Startup builders will help deep tech firms commercialize as part of a $75 million program by the National University of Singapore, the Nanyang Technological University and Temasek. Ampere Sand is the first company to be launched under this initiative. It produces Solid State Transformers, or SSTs. Transformers convert electricity from high to low voltages, making it safe for households to use. But SSTs make this process more energy efficient and able to charge electric vehicles faster. This use case has attracted a $10 million funding from investors who want to roll this out globally by 2025. To speed up such commercial use, both universities have also developed a simplified intellectual property licensing framework. It will cut the licensing processing time for IPs down to a few weeks instead of taking months. Speaking at an annual event for the research industry, Deputy Prime Minister Hing Sui Kiet says this will help innovative firms in Singapore get ahead of the competition. Tech cycles are shortening and becoming more disruptive. This brings significant upsides, but requires us to develop the necessary capacity and capabilities to seize these opportunities. In a fragmented protectionist world, where even science and tech could be curbed, we need to be more proactive and forward-looking in identifying the next bound of growth and invest in them early. For more on the story, we have with us Dr. Anshuman Tripathi. He's co-founder of Ampere Sand. He's also the Senior Program Director of Advanced Power Electronics at NTU's Energy Research Institute. Also with us is uh, Phil Inagaki, Managing Director of Zora Innovation. Now, his company is an early-stage deep tech investing platform owned by Tomase. Uh, welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Right, let, let's start with, with you, uh, uh, Dr. Anshuman. Um, this whole concept of solid state transformer technology, I don't think it's going to be very, uh, you know, people at home aren't going to be very familiar with this. Um, just for their benefit, could you crunch that down and, and tell us why, what is it firstly, and why people should care about it? So I'll give you a very simple analogy to make it clearer to the masses. So imagine cell phones 30 years ago. They were big and bulky ones. And if I tell you that you can make calls to me, what I cannot make calls to you, it's only one way direction. Mm -hmm. Now you change the scenario, fast forward it to today, where we have iPhones 15s and very smartphones with a lot of capabilities and they can be bi-directional as well. Mm -hmm. So the grids of yesterday used to be single direction. So generation, transmission, distribution and usage. Mm -hmm. But grids of, of today, for the past decade or so, have changed quite a bit, significantly. A lot of renewables coming into the power network a lot of electric vehicles getting, getting connected to the same network. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, it's like an internet of energy being transacted at the same node. Solid state transformers bridge this particular gap. You know, it's, it's like a smartphone bridges a lot of gap in terms of communication. Solid state transform does, transformer does that for energy. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I understand that you guys want to roll it up by 2025. Is, is that a realistic target, you think, for commercialization? Yes, uh, we feel it is realistic because we have advanced the technology for the past seven, eight years, uh, ably funded by the National Research Foundation. Mm. And we are confident that in the next two years or so, we'll be able to produce something which can be converted into, into products. Mm. Mm. Mr. Nagaki, bring you in now. Um, your website tells us that at Zora is investing in disruptive, world-changing ventures forged by ambitious founders and powered by compelling science breakthrough. That's pretty ambitious. So when you set your sights on Ampersand, what of these do they check off that made you go, yes, this is where we're going to put our money into? Well, of course, I'm going to say all of them. But um, <laughs> what I would say is market, team and technology. So the market for Ampere Sand is simply enormous. Mm. The world is talking just in the next few years about installing about 200 gigawatts in fast charging capacity. To put that in perspective, the whole country of Singapore consumes six gigawatts. Mm. So imagine more than 30 Singapores just for fast charging worldwide. Mm. 
So we ask ourselves, uh, how big can we grow a company? Can we grow a company to a billion dollars in revenue and actually still grow from there? And with Ampere Send, absolutely, that opportunity is there. Team, well, team being brilliant is table stakes. Of course, Entryman is brilliant. But as we started working with him, what really struck me is that he's a leader that really cares about his team. His research group has a fantastic culture. And they also have an open dialogue where they can challenge each other, they can push each other, but they're really seeking what is the true answer, right? Not holding some opinion fixed, but really having that intellectual honesty. Mm. Startups get really intense. And if you don't have that culture, if you don't have that DNA, it is very hard to be successful. So it's not only that he's smart, that his whole team is smart, but they have the right culture for us to work with. Mm. The other part of team is, can we attract the commercial talent to the startup? And in this case, we've already secured a pipeline of incredible talent, local talent, global talent. Um, people are really drawn to this opportunity. And finally, technology. Technology, um, part of our job is to landscape globally and make sure that the technologies we want to spin out of the Singapore research ecosystem are the best yeah. worldwide so that as we attack global markets, they will be able to compete. And when we conducted that due diligence, uh, it really passed mm. muster. Yeah, and, and just based on that, you know, you, now you guys have this $10 million kitty uh, to play with, but it's not just the funds, is it? I mean, the, the expertise from Zora as well would be in, invaluable in, in a project such as yours. Yeah, absolutely, because technology is just one part of commercialization. There are many other pillars that uh, we are not an expert or a skillful at. And that is what Zora brings on the table. And it has been an absolute blessing that um, an industry like Zora exists at a time when we are at the, at the threshold of moving from uh, research mm. to, to commercialization. Yeah, so and indeed. for many startups as well, given the, the global economic uncertainty as well, they want to be very sure that whatever they put their money into is going to work. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, um, so what, what propels this transition towards commercialization is the entire ecosystem mm. and the willingness of this ecosystem to support this, uh, these, these ventures. Mm. So I, I believe, uh, as you mentioned, it is the right time and with the right teams in place all the pillars are aligned. Mm. Uh, Mr. Nagaki, I, I'm sure you'd like to believe that you've developed this eye to find and assess deep tech startups uh, quite successfully. Um, tell us a bit about your journey, because you started at the young age of uh, 24, I believe. Yeah, I founded um, my first uh, semiconductor materials company, what we would call a deep tech startup these mm. days, uh, when I was 24. Um, and I had a very unique qualification. One of my mentors likes to say, to start a deep tech company, you need to be very skilled and very brave or very naive. <laughs> and at 24, I was extremely naive. I didn't know what I was Maybe going all of into. The above, yeah. <laughs> but joking aside, um, I spent my first 16 years as an entrepreneur across multiple right. startups. Mm. I got to work with some of the best investors with you know, colleagues which were often much more experienced than myself. And it's through that experience that I, you know, hopefully I developed an eye. And about four years ago, I moved over to a venture fund called The Engine, closely associated with MIT. And two years ago, I moved here at, at Zora to mm. um, help, amongst other things, venture build with the Singapore ecosystem. So you've been in each other's, well, you've been in his shoes at least. I, the doctor's shoes. I have yeah. been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, given, given how you're quite the journeyman when it comes to these things, how would you assess Singapore's deep tech startup scene? Is it, is it comparable to what you've seen elsewhere? Well, you know, I, I was last in the Boston ecosystem, which I would say in certain fields, take climate tech for an example, mm. is really right now one of the leading ecosystems in the world. And, and they've been at it longer. Um, what I would say is that Singapore is on the cusp and there's been a lot of amazing work to prepare the ecosystem. And I would not have come here if I didn't believe that we were ready to have some outsized successes, mm. really build some meaningful companies. And, and mm. so I think um, we've got some work left to do, but we are on the cusp of, of very exciting times, I would mm. say. Oh, 
One more question to you, Dr. Anshuman. Uh, we heard a bit of the story yesterday of the work being done on IP yeah. and, and just really streamlining that. So I'm wondering how important is IP to the kind of work you're doing? And being in this ecosystem, are you happy with the work being done so far to streamline and quicken the IP process? Yes. Sir, licensing I, process. The Yeah, thank you. I think the second part... I will answer first. Mm. Yes, I am very convinced and very happy that uh, the IP tra transition process from uh, institute to industry is smoothening up and it, it, it helps the commercialization trajectory. I sense a yeah. butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so uh, but coming, coming down to the IP generation itself, you know, this is a space which with a lot of promise and uh, you know several gigawatts of chargers for example it's just one area where solid state transformer kind of technology fits mm. there are many other use cases where this can go so we have garnered for the past seven eight years uh, tons of ip around 15 uh, patents and uh, uh, it is important to have them because we have the goal and we have the notion of going uh, and making some products out of this platform technology and therefore uh, and we are not the only ones who, mm -hmm. who are who are into this and therefore ip becomes mm -hmm. very very important mm -hmm. and and the process of translation becomes even more important mm. yeah. and if you zoom out a bit i guess it would attract then you know even startups from elsewhere yes, to, well, yes, you know to set up shop here because of how strong the ip laws are over here Absolutely. gentlemen thanks very much for joining us this evening and sharing your insights with us we've been speaking there with uh, dr anshuman tripathi he's co-founder of deep tech startup Ampersand and Phil Inagaki, MD of Zora Innovation. That's an early stage investing platform for deep tech.